Father in heaven, be with us now, we pray. We have opened up your words. Lead and guide us into all truth is our prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. All right, friends. Great Controversy, page 500, I believe 551. Yes. The chapter entitled, Can Our Dead Speak to Us? Let's begin with that title. So, Hillary, based on scripture, can the dead speak to the living? No, they cannot. And we find that several places all throughout the Bible. But one particular scripture that uh, lays out this truth beautifully for us is Ecclesiastes yes. chapter 9, verses 5 and 6. Let's read that. It says this, For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. Neither have they any more a reward, for the memory of them is forgotten. Also their love and their hatred and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. Friends, this evening, we welcome your input, your participation. So based on scripture, can the dead speak to the living? Not at all. You know, friends, no. I was giving this Bible study a few, a few years back, and, and some, someone I was studying with shared a scripture as one to contradict the fact that the dead cannot communicate with the living. And the scripture he, the scripture he posed is found in Hebrews chapter 11, when the Bible says, Abel, being dead, yet speaketh. Let's go there. Where are we going to, my friends? Hebrews chapter 11. Can our dead speak to us? The answer is no, based on scripture. Right. But there is a text which says that Abel being dead yet speaketh. Yes. So how do we reconcile these two things? How? Let's read, it. Let's read that scripture. Verse okay. 4. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, mm. by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts. And by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. Yet speaketh. So how do we reconcile that? Because based on the scriptures, the dead cannot communicate with the living. But this one says that Abel being dead yet speaketh. Come on, how would you counsel and instruct somebody on this fact? What, what does this verse mean? Him being dead yet speaketh. That's good, but say, be more specific. He being dead yet speaketh. All right. All right. So even though he died, the life he lived is a constant reminder of the steps to salvation. Amen. Him being dead yet, yet speaketh. speaketh. Not mm -hmm. verbally with words, but his life is a constant testimony. Does it make sense? Let me give you a scripture. Go with me. What auxiliary? Uh, Revelation 14, verse 13. Let's go there. Chapter 14 of Revelation. Let's take a look at verse 13. Do you have it there? Yes. Read that for us, Hillary, what it says there. And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. That's a beautiful text. Amen? It really is. And when you think of it also... He being dead yet speaketh, when we read the words of God, when we read the account of Abel, and when we read all of the books of scriptures from these men that have died, they're still speaking. Yes. Not them literally being dead speaking, but their life um, account are recorded here, and also their words are recorded here. So As, their works do follow them. Amen. And notice in verse 13, it says this, Yea, verse 13, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors. So when they die, what happens? They rest from yes, their works, their labors. their labors. They no longer have life. But notice now, their works do what now? Follow, Follow them. them. All right? Just as in the Bible, the scriptures, two major divisions. Old Testament, mm -hmm. New Testament. What does testament mean? What is the root word of testament? Testimony. Testimony, a mm -hmm. testator, right? Mm -hmm. So these men are still testifying, not verbally, but by their lifestyle. Amen. Look at the screen right here. 
This quotation is from Life and Teachings of Paul, page 294, paragraph 1. It says this. And when the grave receives the child of God, mm. he being dead yet speaketh, All his right. works do follow him. The memory of his words of admonition and encouragement of his steadfast adherence to the truth under all circumstances speaks more powerfully than even his, his living, living example. Insect. And that's so true because so many times, um, like, of course, uh, Moses Mason recently uh, died and a lot of individuals maybe before his passing did not listen to his messages or just him, for example, not just him. But other people, C.D. Brooks, yes, E.E. E. Cleveland. But then after they after they go to the grave, then there's more interest in what they had to say, and Correct. people are going back. Oh, let me see what he was preaching. Let me let me hear. So their works are still um, following them, even right. though they have passed off the scene. Look with me, Hebrews chapter one. Go there with me, Hebrews chapter one. Notice now, friends. So now, who has God sent? To minister to the living. Not demons now. Right. Not devils now, but who? Angels. Let's read that. Hebrews chapter 1, verse number 14 says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? And what erroneous doctrine has Satan allowed to be preached that obscures and perverts the true teaching? The true teaching that the dead does not communicate with the living. The natural immortality of the soul. Look at the screen right here. This is Great Controversy, page 551. The ministration of holy angels as presented in the scriptures is a truth most comforting and precious to every follower of Christ. But the Bible teaching upon this point has been obscured mm. and perverted by the errors of popular theology. Mm. The doctrine of natural immortality, first borrowed from the pagan philosophy and in the darkness of the great apostasy incorporated into the Christian faith, has supplanted the truth so plainly taught in Scripture that, that the dead know not anything. So pause right there. So what is that false doctrine? The natural immortality of the soul. And with whom and where did that doctrine begin? Well, it began with Satan in the Garden of Eden when he said to Eve, uh, Thou shalt not surely die if you partake of this fruit from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Look with me carefully, my friends. Let's all turn there. Genesis chapter 3. I want someone, I want you all to tell me in chapter 3 of Genesis, where does Satan promise Eve immortality in sin. Can anyone tell me? Between verse 1 and verse 6. Anyone tell me? Anyone? All right. Silence. Verse 4. All right. We'll read verse 4. Hillary, read verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, ye shall not surely die. All right. So does that mean he was promising her immortality in sin? Yes. Let's, let's add something else to that. Look at verse number 5. Hillary, verse 5. For God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened. Listen now. And listen, ye listen. shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. What's the last phrase again? Ye, and ye shall be as gods, gods come knowing, on. knowing good, and good and evil. evil. What else the question? So in disobedience, Satan promised Eve life. You shall not show to die. In the day you eat thereof, God doth know, your eyes shall be opened and you shall become as, as gods. gods. Question, what does God have that man doesn't have right now? Immortality. Immortality. And what is that scripture? Come on. First Timothy chapter Amen. 6. Let's read that. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 15, verse 16. So when Satan said to Eve, you can disobey God and you shall become as God. God. What does God have? One great attribute that man doesn't have? Immortality, immortality. right now. Right. Only when Christ comes, the faithful receives? Immortality. Notice now. Do you have it there? Yes. 1 Timothy 6, verse 15. Go ahead, Hillary. What it says. Which in his times he shall show, who is mm. blessed and only, and only potentate, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, who only hath immortality. Thank you so much. Pause now. So this doctrine, false doctrine, of the natural immortality of the soul began with Satan. We are in, in Eden. Question now. For those of you who read the chapter, question now. 
when and when did this false doctrine of the natural immortality of the soul enter the Christian faith? When? Come on, you read the chapter. When? During the oh. dark ages. During when? During the dark ages. Get back to the screen right here. Red words, mm -hmm. Hillary. GC551. Red words. The doctrine of natural immortality first borrowed from the pagan philosophy and, and in the darkness of the great apostasy incorporated into the Christian faith. Pause right there. Question for you now. Which chapter in the book Great Controversy came to your mind when you heard those words on the screen? In the darkness of the great apostasy. The, the era of spiritual darkness, darkness, the third chapter in the book Great Controversy. Mm -hmm. And who was that king, that emperor that had this nominal conversion? Who was this? Constantine. Amen. So notice now. So when Constantine claimed to have been converted, all right, into the Christian faith, Hillary, talk to us now. What two principal satanic doctrines that Constantine and his men bring over into the Christian faith. Mm -hmm. These two twin false doctrines would be the natural immortality of the soul, as we just read, mm. and also Sunday sacredness. Do you see it now, friends? And we're going to see later on that the natural immortality of the soul actually prepares the way for people to accept Sunday sacredness. And that is what GC 551 on the screen is telling you. It came into the Christian faith during the darkness of the great apostasy, right? Mm -hmm. Constantine time period, the natural immortality of the soul, baptized paganism. paganism. Wonderful. Not only that, but Sunday sacredness right. in the same time period. Does that make sense to you, friends? That's history. Notice now, Hillary, talk to us. What way was prepared by the false doctrine of the natural immortality of the soul, what was the fruit of that? Well, modern spiritualism. But we can also say ancient spiritualism because the foundation is the same. We saw that it originated with sin and Satan at the Garden of Eden. So not only modern spiritualism, but also ancient spiritualism. Spiritualism in general. Look at the screen. That's Constantine in 321 A.D., when he was back, well, uh, when he claimed to become a Christian, Sunday sacredness, and also what? The natural the immortality of the soul. And then from the Christian church, then came the Roman, papal church, yeah, Roman church. Catholicism, the twin doctrines at her foundation. Let's move on. And then we have no GC 551. It says this first line, Hillary, red words. The doctrine of man's consciousness in death especially the belief that spirits of the dead mm. return to minister to the living has prepared the way for, for modern spiritualism. For what now? Modern spiritualism. So friends, since the Bible teaches that the dead does not return to communicate with the living, then who is it that is communicating with the living? Fallen angels, put, demonic spirits. Put down chapter 12 of Revelation. Verse 3 and verse 4, how many stars, how many angels did Satan pull from heaven? One third. One third. Fallen angels. Go to 2 second, second Corinthians chapter 11. These are fallen angels. 2 Corinthians chapter 11. And look with me at verse 13. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. One more scripture, chapter 16 of the Revelation. You see, Pastor, there's a contrast here because we read Hebrews 1, verse 14, mm -hmm. that the angels of God are ministering spirits to those who are heirs of salvation. And here we see the ministering spirits of Satan. He says, therefore, it's no great thing if his, Satan's ministers, also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness. So they're ministering spirits as well, but not ministering for salvation. They're ministering for damnation. Thank you. Chapter 16 of Revelation, verse number 14, for they are the spirits of devils, devils it says. 
And what are they doing, Hillary? Working miracles. Working miracles which go forth unto the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of that great day of God, God Almighty. Almighty. These are not holy angels. No. These are not the dead speaking to the living. These are fallen angels, my friends. And we are going to cover some pertinent points as we move forward. In this chapter, great controversy, can our dead speak to us? The Lord's messenger says that Satan can counterfeit. He can personate the dead with perfect precision. Mm. The very tone, the very look, voice. Look at this, look at this on your screen. GC 552. What it says there, Hillary? He has power to bring before men the appearance of their departed friends. Mm. The counterfeit is perfect. perfect. The familiar look, the words, the tone are reproduced with marvelous distinctness. Pause right there. And later on in the, this book, Great Controversy, we're going to cover a chapter, Scriptures are a Safeguard. And we are going to read then that God's people in the last days, they must not yield mm. to the evidence of their senses. Mm. We shall see things, smell things, and we cannot give in to the evidences right. of our senses. But dwell upon what? The, the word, word of, of God. God. Question, is there a scripture now? Talk to me. Is there a text in the Bible where Satan... His counterfeit was perfect as it relates to bringing the dead back to life. Yes. Where will you go? And who is this? This is King Saul and mm -hmm. Samuel. Let's go there. The impersonation of Samuel. That's it. That's it. Not true Samuel. Right. A counterfeit. All Correct. right. First Samuel 28. Now, look at verse 11. Okay. Then said the woman, this is the witch of Endor, mm -hmm. whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, bring me up Samuel. Pause. Did it say bring down? No. Bring up. From where? From, ah, from the grave up. Notice mm -hmm. now. Read on. And when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, Same. saying, Okay. Why hast thou deceived me? For, For thou, thou art, art Saul. Hillary. We don't have much time. Go to verse 14. And please. he said unto her, What form is he of? Mm. And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. Mm. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. So was it Samuel? No, it was Saul not. perceived, underscore that. He perceived it was Samuel. And what did Saul do? Bowed down on the ground. So who is he giving reverence and homage and, and allegiance to? This apostate woman. Mm, 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 mm. This demon, friends. Mm. And look at verse number 15. Now, 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 friends, we know this. Now, how would you prove to somebody that this was not Samuel, but a devil personating Samuel? May I ask them first? Sure. Hillary? Okay, talk to us. Verse 6. Verse six? What about verse 6? Okay, I'll read verse 6. Hillary? And when Samuel inquired of the and Lord... And when Saul... I'm sorry. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams, nor by Urim, nor by prophets. Okay, say on now, preacher. What are you saying? Talk to us. It couldn't have been the Lord because the Lord wasn't speaking to him by any means. Oh, by any means. Okay, Amen. what means? Dream. Dream is your personal connection with God. Urim. Who wore the Urim? The high priest. The priest, the high priest. And did Saul not cut off the high priest? Yes. He killed, killed the high him. priest. Yep. Okay. The prophets. Samuel. Samuel. He rejected the words of God through, through the Samuel. Prophet. So all the, uh, all the appointed channels by which and through which God speaks to man, Saul had cut off. That's right. So now anybody else? What else would you say to prove that this was not Samuel? Anything else? Anything else? Well, I would say that God had prohibited um, this work of sorcery and witchcraft. So how is it then that God would give power to give life or to, um, yeah, re 
to resurrect somebody through a means that he called ab an abomination. Correct. So if God himself did not raise up um, Samuel from the grave, he would not give an abominable woman or an abominable person that power to, to give life. And to, to add to that, Leviticus 19, verse 31, the Bible says we must not have communication with wizards, mm -hmm. right? And witches. Right. Those things are an abomination. Leviticus 20 and verse 27. So God would not work through a medium of Satan Correct. to bring a blessing. No, he would not. Notice now, beside verse number six, I want everyone to write down 1 Chronicles 10, verse 13 and verse 14. Let's go there now. Hold your place in 1 Samuel 28. Go to 1 Chronicles chapter 10. One more nail in a short place to prove this was not Samuel. 1 Chronicles 10. Look at verse 13. It says this. So Saul died for his transgression. Let's see why God cut off Saul. All right? It was for the means of Saul communicating with the witch. So why would God bless him through a means that God said was an abomination? Mm -hmm. Verse 13, Hillary, verse 13. So Saul died for his transgression, which he committed against the Lord. Even? Even against the word of the Lord, which he kept not. And? And also for asking counsel of one that had a familiar spirit to inquire of it. Do you see it now, friends? Verse 14, and inquired not of the Lord. Therefore, God slew him. He slew him and turned the kingdom unto David, the son of Jesse. Go back. 1 Samuel 28. Yes. Friends, God and Satan do not work in co-partnership. Go That's ahead. That's right. Well, I wanted to say also, if you read on in verse 15, this impersonation of, of Samuel. Of 1 Samuel 28. Yes. Yes, go this ahead. This impersonation of Samuel actually spoke true words to Saul. And so even though Saul was seen with his eyes and he was hearing these words that the living Samuel said, because when Saul went and begged, you know, give me another chance. And Samuel said, you've rejected the word of the Lord. Right. This same impersonation of Samuel said the same thing, mm -hmm. but yet it was not of God. And so it was not leading him to repentance, but to drive fear in his heart and to lead him to destruction. Go ahead. That's right. And so I wanted to say. Um, Deuteronomy chapter 13 is a good scripture to use um, to, to show that someone may, may um, perform a miracle as, yes, it, as yes. it seems or may do a sign. But if that person does not lead you to worship of the true God, if that yes. person does not lead you to the Sabbath or to the present truth, you cannot follow that. Notice now. Thank you. In 1 Samuel 28, notice in verse 14. And he said unto her, what form is he of? And she said, an old man cometh up, and he is covered with a what? A mantle. mantle. And Saul perceived that it was? Samuel. I want to ask you a question. Why would this say a mantle? And Saul perceived it was Samuel. Did Samuel ever wore a mantle? Yes, he did. Yes. But what happened to the mantle? It tore. It was torn by whom? Saul. By Saul. When Samuel walked off and said, listen, Saul, God has rent the kingdom from you. And, and Samuel walked off and Saul grabbed the mantle. Mm -hmm. And the mantle was torn off him. And Samuel turned and said, just as how you have torn this mantle off me, God has rent the kingdom yeah. from you. So Samuel didn't have that. Mental. Mental. Comparing scripture with? with? scripture. Okay, look at verse 15. Put this scripture down. Beside verse 14, rather. Beside verse 14, put this text down. 1 Samuel 15. 1 Samuel 15, verse 26 and verse number 28. Now, if you forget anything we have just said, write this quotation down. Because this quotation summarizes every point we just made. What is our reference there? Uh, Patriarchs and Prophets, page 683. All right, don't miss that reference. Look with me. Isaiah, what warning does God give to us as Saul mm -hmm. went to seek the witch of Endor? That we should not seek after those that mutter or those that peep or those that work wizardry, but to the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word. 
There is what? There is no light in there. Let's read that. Isaiah chapter 8. Now, friends, do you know how many people in the world today who seek witches? They go to palm readers, tarot readers. What else? They go to. Talk to me. Sorcerers. What now? Psychic. The psychic network. Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing now. And sometimes people turn to those means when they're trying to solve a crime. Like if there's an unsolved crime, a family member may even turn to a psychic to help them to find out, you know, what happened to their loved one. Isaiah chapter 8. Look with me at verse 19. It says, Hillary and when? And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits mm. and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God for the, for the living, living to why the dead? do you go to the dead? Wow. For the living. Verse 20 now, what it says in, in verse 20. To the law and to the testimony, if they speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. First pause right here. I want everyone to know this. Not only is Satan going to work through his fallen angels to lead people into deception. But Satan is going to work through human beings, men who are possessed mm. with demons. Is that point clear? Look at the screen right here. This is a reference. Patriarchs and Prophets, page 683. Let me read this in your hearing. You go ahead. It says this. Watch carefully the message itself is sufficient evidence of its origin. Its object was not to lead Saul to repentance, but to urge Saul unto ruin. Mm. And this is not the work of God, but of Satan. Furthermore, the act of Saul in consulting a sorceress is cited in Scripture as one reason why, why he, Saul, was rejected by God and abandoned to destruction. Mm -hmm. All right. Notice now. So in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 19, verse 20, this Scripture is not specifically addressing fallen angels. That's right. Communicating with the living. No, these are people who are demon-possessed. And how may we discern what's in verse 20 to the law and, and to, to the, the testimony? So, friend, I want to ask a question. So, what if people today are teaching that we can bend God's Ten Commandments in order to be saved? What is these people in? They're in what spiritualism. They in? spiritualism. Spiritualism. Why? Because they are breaking God's, God's law. Do you remember this, my friends? What did this Seventh-day Adventist pastor say from Green Lake Seventh-day Adventist Church, John McClart? What, what did he say, Hillary? Well, he was saying that in order to accommodate or accept the LGBT lifestyle, the law of God has to be bent mm -hmm. or broken. What is that? This is modern spiritualism. spiritualism. Right. Is that point clear, friends? Hold your place in Isaiah. I'll give you one more text. Look with me at 1 Timothy. 1 Timothy. Chapter 4. You know what? Don't go to 1 Timothy. Go to 1 John first. Go to 1 John. 1 John chapter 4. Look at verse 1. You see, friends, it's so easy for, easy for some of us to speak of the demons and the fallen angels, right? Mm -hmm. Who are working deception upon the living. But what about the living who are demon-possessed working deception upon other living human beings? Right. Come on. Look at this. 1 John chapter 4, verse 1 says what, Hillary? Beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits, whether they are of God. Why? Because many false prophets are gone out into the world. And what will they do? Go now. 1 Timothy chapter 4. Where are we going to now? 1 Timothy, Timothy chapter 4. 4. And verse number 1, it says this. Now the spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times... Some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to what, my friends? Seducing, Seducing spirits and, and doctrines of devils. So where were they first? Well, they were once in the faith. And what happens now? They departed from the faith and they gave heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. So the seducing spirits cover two groups. One, Satan's fallen angels. angels. Mm -hmm. The seducing spirits, 1 John chapter 4, verse 1, falls Prophets. Prophets. That's right. And how may we discern them? To the law and to, and the, to the testimony. Come on, Hillary. So if someone is, is teaching 
that you don't have to keep the law, then they're a spiritualist. That's it. In essence. That's it. And notice, it says in Isaiah chapter 8, verse 20, to the law and to the testimony. testimony. What does the Bible call the testimony of Jesus Christ? The spirit of prophecy. The what? Come on, talk to me, the friends. The spirit of prophecy. The spirit of prophecy, Hillary. Mm -hmm. So now, what if our church is now demoting the writings of Ellen White? They're in what are they in? Spiritualism. I didn't hear you. I heard Hillary. What are they in? Talk to me. They're in spiritualism. To the law and to the testimony. testimony if they speak. Not according. If they demote the law and the testimony, they're what? They're in spiritualism. Verse 19. And leading others. Of, of Isaiah 8. So what mm -hmm. do you make of this? When a Loma Linda professor states that what? We must get rid of the clobber scriptures in the Bible as it relates to the as it relates to condemning the LGBT lifestyle. Who now is David Larson? He's a modern day spiritualist. Spirit. Yes, leading people to break God's law. And look at this. What did the world church vote in 2005? Well, they voted that the writings of Ellen White can only enrich. But what? but not define the faith and practice of Seventh-day Adventists. Don't forget that. It cannot define our faith and practice. And what says 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1? Some shall depart, depart from, from the, the faith. faith. Wow. Mm -hmm. did, you get, did you catch that, my friends? Right. Some shall depart from the faith, faith. giving heed to... Seducing spirits and, and doctrines of and the devil. And in 2005, in, in, in St. Louis... Missouri, they voted, Sister White's writings can enrich but not define our faith and, and practice. And even if this wasn't voted in, okay, and even if David Larson and McClarty and some of these other uh, apostate pastors didn't make the, the statements that they made, we can see by the practices, by what has come into the Seventh-day mm. Adventist churches in the form of the music, in the form of the entertainment, in the form of just the overall worldly environment that has come in, the dress, the diet, et, et cetera, the sports. Uh, you can see that there is no adherence to the law or to the testimony because these things are expressly forbade in God's word and in the testimonies. And so even if we never had these men to vote it down, just the very practices themselves uh, are a rebuke and suggest that the church has fallen into spiritualism. Let me add. Now, give us all a scripture. Matthew 15. Let me start you off. Matthew 15, verse 9. Teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. Uh, and verse 7 and verse 8 says what now? It With says, their mouths they do honor me. Honor me. But their works are what? Are far, far from me. Far from me. That's it. Look at the screen here, my friends. And then in 2015, what did they vote concerning the testimony of Jesus Christ? The writings of the spirit of prophecy Ellen White. Blue words. This was the former statement, which says what? As the what? As the Lord's messenger, her writings are a continuing and authoritative source of truth. And what did they vote afterwards? The change statement. Okay. Red words. They said, her writings, last sentence, her writings speak with what now? Prophetic authority. Mm, that's it. But on the top it says, her writings are a continuing authoritative source of truth at the bottom the chain statement her writings speak with only what prophetic, prophetic authority. authority a demotion of the spirit of prophecy step by step right. now talk to us because on the screen right here we have the fox sisters mm -hmm. well they are the ones and what event mm -hmm. what event triggered modern spiritualism the mysterious rapping also known as the Rochester Knockings. Knockings. Look at the screen right here, my friends. I'll pass that. Look at this. GC 552. Before I read this, has anyone here never heard of, of the Fox Sisters? Raise your hand. Fox Sisters? Okay. This is when modern spiritualism began, especially in America. Stay tuned. Hillary, from top, what it says there. 
when they have been led to believe that the dead actually return to communicate with them, mm. Satan causes those to appear who went into the grave unprepared. They claim to be happy in heaven and even to occupy exalted positions there. And thus the error is widely taught that mm. no difference is made between the righteous and the wicked. So who, what, what, what kind of dead, dead people dead, was Satan allow his demons to personate and to speak with the living. Just any dead? No. But well, primarily the wicked who went Why? down to the grave unprepared. Why the wicked dead? Because then they can come back and tell their uh, the friends, living. the living, that they were transported to heaven. And now they're come back down to minister and to comfort and console, console them, their friends and relatives. So if the, if the wicked dead are in heaven, what does that say? about God's law and victory over sin. Right. That there's no need to keep the law of God. There's no need to strive for victory over sin. Look at this. This is GC 553. Hillary, read words. What it says there. The mysterious wrapping with which modern spiritualism began was not the result of human trickery or cunning, but was the direct work of mm. evil angels who thus introduced one of the most successful, successful of soul-destroying delusions. Read on. Many will be ensnared through the belief that spiritualism is a merely human imposture. Mm. When brought face to face with manifestations which they cannot but regard as supernatural, they, they will, will be, be deceived, deceived and will be led to accept them as the great power of God. So what event triggered modern spiritualism? The mysterious wrapping. Okay, so now when, understand this, put on your paper, when did this modern spiritualism, this, this wrapping began and where? When and where, Hillary? When and it where? It began in the 1840s, and it began in New York. Look at this right here. This on your screen, the Fox Sisters. Modern spiritualism was awakened in America between 1844, don't you forget those dates, 1844 through 1848, Fox Sisters, Katie, Leah, and Maggie. Let's move on. It says this on page 86. Of early writings, it says this, I saw that the mysterious knocking in New York and other places was the power of Satan. All right, read on. And that such things. And that such things would be more and more common, clothed in a religious garb, so as to lull the deceived to greater security and to draw the minds of God's people, if possible, to those things and cause them to doubt the teaching and the power of the Holy Ghost. Pause. So where did it begin? Where? What place? New York. New York City. and other places. Mm -hmm. Next sentence. Let's find when. It says now, this view was given. In 1849, nearly five years since. So what date is that? 1844. Hmm. Watch carefully. Then spirit manifestations were mostly confined to the city of? Rochester. All right. The, known as the? Rochester Knockings. Since that time, the heresy has spread beyond the expectations of anyone. Mm. In 1850, I saw that the mysterious rapping was the power of Satan. Some of it was directly from him and some indirectly through his agents, but it all proceeded from who? From Satan. So now when did modern spiritualism begin? What date? 1844 through 1848. 1849. We're in Rochester, Rochester. New York and other Places. All right. So now what was Satan going to counteract? What was he counteracting for him to allow this mystery knocking and so-called dead communicating with the living? What was he attempting to counteract? Tell us, Hillary, what? The sealing work. When did the sealing of God's people begin? Between 1844 and 1848. And Satan now is trying to get people not to focus on the Bible, the word of God for salvation, but to look to men who are now manifesting so-called supernatural occurrences. 
Wow. So miracles and say these men are being led by God when they are being led by the devil. Wow. Look at this statement right here, my friends. Don't you forget this. So now spiritualism began in 1844 through 1849 in the time when God began doing what, Hillary? Uh, the ceiling work. And also after, just after the investigative judgment began. opened up. That's it. Mm -hmm. Let's go here. Page 43. Early writings. Hillary, what it says there. Satan is now using every device in this sealing time to keep the minds of God's people from the present truth and to cause them to waver. And what is the present truth? Come on. Early writing 63. Okay, go read that. Mm -hmm. Let's read on. I saw. I saw a covering that God was drawing over his people to protect them in the time of trouble. I saw that the mysterious knocking in New York and other places was the power of Satan. And what now? And that such things would be more and more common. common. So why did Satan resurrect ancient spiritualism in 1844 through 1848 to counteract what work? The sealing work and Is the that present clear? truth. Is that point clear, friends? Yes. The sealing work and, and present truth. And what is present truth again, Hillary? But such subjects as the sanctuary in connection with the 2300 20, days. days, the commandments of God, God and the, the faith, faith of, of Jesus. Jesus. Present truth. Right. Spiritualism came in to counteract the investigative judgment. judgment. The and, seal of God. Go ahead. And when you think Victory of the seal, of a sin. Go ahead. When you think of the seal of God, that's inseparably bound with the Sabbath truth. Mm. So we're back to Satan's two twin um, errors. You have the natural immortality of the soul or spiritualism, and you have Sunday sac sacredness. Because if he's trying to counteract the seal of God, of course he's going to bring in his counterfeit, which is Sunday sacredness. So the two always go together: natural immortality of the soul and Sunday. Sunday worship. Now, is this in the Bible? Can we find a scripture where God shows us Satan using spiritualism to counteract the sealing work of God? And the present truth. Is there such a scripture? Go to Isaiah chapter 8. Go back there with me. Notice Isaiah what chapter? Chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. What, what verses did we read earlier? We read 19 Verse 19 and, and verse 20. For emphasis, let's go back and read verse 19. And when they shall say unto you, seek unto them that have familiar spirits, and unto wizards that peep and that mutter, should not a people seek unto their God? For the living... To the dead. To the dead. Look at verse 16. What's in verse 16? It says, bind up the testimony. testimony and watch friends and seal the law among my disciples. Do you see it? Yes. The same scripture that mentions spiritualism, it also mentions the sealing of God's people. Yea, the upholding of what two things? The law the, and the testimony. This wow. is a potent scripture. It is. And this scripture is for the last days. How do I know? Go back now to verse number, verse number, verse number nine. Hillary, what is it in verse nine? Associate yourselves, O ye people, and ye shall be broken in pieces, and give ear, all ye of far countries. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Mm. Gird yourselves, and ye shall be broken in pieces. Now, what text come to mind? Gird yourself, mm -hmm. broken in pieces. What Daniel, prophecy? Daniel 2. Daniel chapter two. 2. Notice now. Wonderful. Skip on down to verse 12. Hillary, verse 12. Say ye not a confederacy to all them to whom this people shall say a confederacy. Neither. Neither fear ye their fear, nor be afraid. And no, so notice now. So what will be causing the people to form a confederacy? Fear. Fear. And what is in Luke 21? Men's hearts. Failing them for, for fear. fear. It's an end time scripture. So now may I ask you a question. Will Satan use his fallen angels to only communicate with the folks in Babylon? Or will the devil also use his fallen angels to personate the dead? The dead loved ones of even Seventh-day Adventists. What do you say? What do you say? Yes, he will. What do you say? The latter? 
Yes, the latter, both. All right. But he knows the former class are already deceived. They're That's already it. a part of Babylon, so he already has them in his grasp. So the ones he's trying to get are the ones who claim to uphold the law and the testimony. So, of course, he's going to target them. Notice, go to Acts 8 with me. Go to Acts chapter 8 and look with me. Do you remember a deacon by the name of Philip? Was he preaching present truth? Was he preaching Christ in Samaria? Yes. And what does the word Christ mean? Messiah. Christ, Messiah, the anointed one. So what prophecy was Philip preaching in Acts 8? What prophecy? The 69 weeks. The prophecy of Daniel 9, 9 and Daniel 24. 8. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 5 of Acts 8. Then Philip went down to where, Hillary? Samaria. And preach whom? And preach Christ Was unto he them. successful? Yeah, oh but look yes. at verse 9. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed mm. from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. Wow. What a showdown, friends. Oh, yes. What a showdown. Look at the screen right here. This is early writings, page 8 to 7. From top. I saw that the saints must get a thorough understanding of present truth, which they will be obliged to maintain from the scriptures. They must understand the state of the dead. So does that mean the understanding of the state of the dead also constitutes present truth? Oh, yes. Okay. For the spirits of devils will yet appear to them, professing to be beloved friends and relatives who will declare to them that the Sabbath has been changed. Also other unscriptural doctrines. Who is she talking to? I saw that whom? The saints. The saints of God. What must we all comprehend? Present truth. And what other doctrine? The, the state, state of, of the, the dead. Why? Because um, spirits of devils will impersonate dead relatives and friends. And come to whom? And come to us and tell us that the Sabbath has been changed. This tells me then. That there are some, that there are many Seventh-day Adventists who go to a Sabbath-keeping church but are not rooted and grounded in Sabbath-keeping. Mm. For the demons will come and say, the Sabbath has been changed. Wow. And many Seventh-day Adventists will give up the Sabbath. It's right there in your face, my friends. Mm. Let's read on. They will do all in their power. They will do all in their power to excite sympathy and will work miracles Pause before right there. them. Are we now hearing professed Seventh-day Adventist pastors saying the Sabbath is no longer the seventh day of the week? The Sabbath is Jesus? Mm -hmm. Clinton Baldwin said that. The Sabbath is Jesus. When I ask a question, that means God did create something on the seventh day. Himself. But that's error, my friend. You see, these are men. We have other men saying that once you come to Jesus, you don't have to observe the seven-day Sabbath. Wow. Even another group who are telling us the Sabbath is not the weakest seventh day. It goes by the moon. Mm -hmm. Lunar Sabbath. Take a look at this. They would do. Hillary, they would do. They will do all in their power to excite sympathy and will work miracles mm. before them to confirm what they declare. The people of God must be prepared to withstand these spirits with the Bible truth that the dead know not anything and that they who appear to them are the spirits of devils. Friends, whenever someone brings a doctrine to you, ask them, show it to me in the Bible, specifically in the spirit of prophecy. If you don't see... That doctrine, whether it is uh, the Sabbath is Jesus, mm -hmm. is not the weekly seventh day, or the Sabbath is based on the moon. Show me where Sister White says we must not keep a seventh day Sabbath of the week, but keep a lunar Sabbath. Right. That's, that's also a demotion of the testimony. That, amen. Mm -hmm. So that, that spiritualism as well. It. Let's get back here. And some folks are going to get angry, but friends, have I become your enemy because the truth is, has been spoken? Mm. It says our minds must not be taken up with things around us. 
but must be occupied with what? With present truth. And notice, what page is this of early writings? 87. And what page does Sister White define present truth? 63. Thank you so much. Present truth and a preparation to give a reason of our hope with meekness and fear. Last sentence, we must seek wisdom from on high that we may stand in this day of error and... And delusion. And delusion. Mm -hmm. Now, now you may think, since Satan had the boldness to come to Jesus in the wilderness... As an angel of, of light. Why do you think the devil would not come to us? His demons will not personate dead loved ones. And come right. to the saints of God and declare that they are being led of the true God of heaven. But this will be a deception. Right. And that's, what, that's why we're told right here, we must not be occupied with the things around us. No. That's Luke 21. But occupied with the present, present truth. truth. Lest your hearts be overcharged with surfeiting and drunkenness and cares of this life, so that day come upon On you, you unawares. unawares. For as a thief would it a come, snare. a mm -hmm. sneer will engross your mind. You will be lost. And that's why it's more than just an intellectual knowledge. Yes. It's an experience. And that's why the sealing is a settling into the truth. Both. Both spiritually. I would say spiritually and is more important. Well, not more important, but just as important as intellectually because we may know it intellectually. But unless we have that sanctified, consecrated experience with Christ, experience in present truth, we will be overcome. And that's why... Sister White calls it an almost overmastering delusion That's it. that the very elect, even as Matthew 24, uh, would be deceived That's it. if Christ wouldn't, you know, cut time short. Let's go back to the screen right here. The very blue words on top says, God's people must understand the state of the dead. Friends, please watch this carefully. For the spirits of devils will yet appear to them, professing to be beloved friends and relatives who would declare to them that what Hillary that the Sabbath has been changed and also what else other unscriptural doctrine they will do all in their power to excite what sympathy and what will they work miracles where in the Bible do we find Satan's fallen angels Satan's ministers working miracles to deceive God's people in the last days, what is that text that comes to your mind? Before that one, give me one more. Revelation. Go to chapter 13 with me. Go there with me. Chapter 13. Where are we going to, my friends? Chapter 13 of the Revelation. Look at verse 13. Hillary, what it says there. And he doeth great wonders, so that he maketh fire come down from heaven on the earth in the sight of men. And do what? And deceiveth them that dwell on the earth. By the means of what? By the means of those miracles, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. Saying to them that dwell on the earth, that they should make an image to the beast, which had the wound by a sword and did live. And what comes next in verse 15? He had power to give life unto what? Unto the image of the beast. That the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image should to the be beast what? should be killed. So what law is in verse 15? What law is this in verse 15? The Sunday law. This is a Sunday law in verse 15. Right. But what is in verse 13 and verse 14? The working of the miracles That's to deceive. It. Spiritualism. Right. Lays the foundation. It's the precursor to the Sunday law crisis. And we are told on page 87, on the screen, early writings, that the spirit of devils will appear to the saints of God, wow. saying, the Sabbath has been changed, working miracles, and God's people are going to give in and be deceived. Here's what we're saying. Here's what we're saying, my friends. In 1844 through 1848, that was the resurrection of ancient sorcery. It was called modern spiritualism. It was raised up by Satan to counteract the beginning. The what, my friends? The beginning. The beginning of God sealing his people. Has the sealing come to an end as yet? No. Is the sealing almost over? So when we come to a time when the sealing of God's people is almost over, what must we expect from Satan? S um, spiritualism. 
it's, it's going to be prevalent. It's going to be rife, not only in society, in Babylon, but also among God's remnant professed people. Right. That's what, look at the screen right here, my friends. This is page 59 of early writings. It says, Hillary, I saw... I saw that soon it would be considered blasphemy to speak against the rapping mm -hmm. and that it would spread more and more, that Satan's power would increase and some of his devoted followers would have power to work miracles and, what? and even to bring down fire from heaven in the sight of men. What scripture is that, my friends? We Chapter 13 of Revelation. Yes. Spiritualism lays the foundation to the Sunder Law movement. That's right. So now when you read Great Controversy, page 588, where Sister White says that the natural immortality of the soul, which is spiritualism, it lays the foundation for the Sunder Law crisis because it's in the Bible right here, my friends. It is. And I think we can also see it in Ezekiel, um, Ezekiel 8 and 9 yes. when you were talking about how spiritualism yes. came in to counteract the sealing work. We know the sealing takes place in Ezekiel 9, mm -hmm. but in Ezekiel 8, God shows Ezekiel all of these abominations and these abominations have everything to do with spiritualism in the church. And the very last abomination that was shown to Ezekiel was the people bowing down to the sun toward their e the east. And all of these abominations, spiritualism was an integral part of now, it. Amen. Now, friends, what happened in Egypt just before God delivered Israel from Egypt. What happened down there? Talk to me. What Thanks. happened down there? Watch, what was that showdown, my brother? Worship, right? Mm -hmm. Right? And what was uh, Moses and Aaron doing? What were Pharaoh's uh, magicians doing and why? Both camps were working miracles. miracles. Why? To show what? To show the true God who was being led by the true God of heaven. And what did Pharaoh's magicians do? Counterfeit. Counterfeit. Counterfeit miracles. And that was just before God delivered Israel from Egyptian bondage. So what must we expect then just before the second coming of Christ? The working of deceptive miracles. Spiritualism. Go with me. Second Thessalonians. Chapter 2, here's Bible now, just before the second coming of Christ, Satan will work, work more, more rapidly, more aggressively with spiritualism. Mm -hmm. Look at verse number 8 of 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. Verse 8, it says this, And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. What is that? The second coming? Yes. yes Again. It is. And shall destroy with what, Hillary? The brightness of his coming. Is that the second coming of Jesus? Yes. Now, now what is in verse 9? In the context of the second coming of Christ, what is in verse 9 now? Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all powers and signs and lying wonders mm. and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish. So what will he work just before the second coming of Christ? With all what? Power. With wow. all what? Signs. signs and all what? Lying, lying wonders. wonders. Then we come down to verse number, verse number 11. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion that they should believe a lie. Read on. That they all might be damned who believe not the truth, mm. but had pleasure in unrighteousness. And this is where Sister White says she saw in vision. The chapter is called spiritualism. And she saw in vision a train. Mm. And it seemed as if all of the world was on board. And where were they going at lightning speed? To perdition. Look at this right here, friends. The context again. Page 263 of early writings. I saw from top. I saw the rapidity with which this delusion was spreading. Mm -hmm. A train of cars was shown me going with the speed of lightning. The angel bade me look carefully. Mm. I fixed my eyes upon the train. It seemed that the whole world was on board. Mm. Then he showed me the conductor, a fair, stately person whom all the passengers looked up to and reverenced. I wonder who that is today. Mm -hmm. I was perplexed and asked my attending angel who it was. He said, it is Satan. Mm -hmm. 
He is the conductor in the form of an angel of light. He has taken the world captive. They are given over to strong delusions to believe a lie that they might be damned. His agent, the highest in order next to him, is the engineer. And others of his agents are employed in different offices as he may need them. And they are all going with lightning speed to perdition. I asked. I asked the angel if... If there was, were none left. He bid me look in the way. In the opposite direction. I saw a little company mm. traveling a what way? A narrow pathway. Now, did Sister what have a vision of a narrow pathway? Yes. Cast and up. where was it going? It was going to the holy city. And what was behind them? A bright light. And she called that bright light what, Hillary? The midnight the cry. The midnight cry. And who was just ahead of them? Jesus, Jesus Christ. Jesus, my friends. Amen. Two groups, hmm. one on a train, going at lightning speed to perdition, but a little company on the straight and narrow path going where? Upward. Upward. The midnight cry. And what messages are linked to the midnight cry? The first, the second, and the third angel's messages. So that narrow path represents present truth. That's it. Mm -hmm. That's it. And friends, how big do you think uh, the church of spiritualism is? It's Millions. a mega church, my friend. <laughs> Many members in that church. It's the biggest church, bigger oh, yeah. than the Roman Catholic Church. Oh, oh, oh yes. Because oh, they're yes. a part of it. <laughs> I mean, friends, this church of spiritualism, it has members, and even the members don't even know that they are a part of the oh. church. Spiritualism. Mm. And those in this church don't even go to church. Mm. Spiritualism. It's a mega church. It would make... T.D. Jakes, Joel Osteen's church looked like minuscule, a small little company. Mm. Mega church. Oh, Look yes. at this right here, my friends. This is GC 556. Hillary, the claim. The claim that men can hold intercourse with evil spirits is regarded as a fable of the dark ages. But. But spiritualism, which numbers its converts by hundreds of thousands. Yay. Yay by millions, which has made its way into scientific circles, which has invaded churches and has found favor in legislative bodies and even in the courts of kings. This, this mammoth. mammoth deception is but a revival in a new disguise of the witchcraft condemned and prohibited of old. Let's not pass this by so quickly. So where is spiritualism found? In what circles? Everywhere. Scientific, churches, uh, legislative, uh, in courts. So may I ask Everywhere. you a question? What work has God given to us then? Where must we go then, my friends? Who must we preach to? The world. Every nation, kindred, tongue, and people. There is a church called... Uh, uh, science, Scientology. That's per the whole church. The name spells spiritualism. The very name. Right. And when you think of all of the churches of Babylon, they, they believe in the natural immortality of the soul. So this church of spiritualism encompasses all of the churches of Babylon, plus all of the atheists, plus all of those in witchcraft. It, it encompasses everybody except for those on that narrow path. And that's why she says it's a, it's a small company. And Satan is so cunning that he masks it. You know, so people don't even realize it. I mean, there's some that will accept it in the form of witchcraft, but then there's others that won't accept it in that form. And so he comes to them from another angle. And so that's why he invades these various that's places it. and inserts spiritualistic teachings under many different guises. S evolution, right. spiritualism. Mm -hmm. Do you see it, my Psychology, friends? Psychology. In our schools, in many how many of you went to school and read the classics? Yep. Yoga. <laughs> Yeah. English Mythology. literature, right? The Iliad, etc. right? Remember those days? The Odyssey, those days, mm -hmm. remember that? That's spiritualism. Right. Deified myth, it's mythology. Right, even in the video, even in what people call entertainment, yes. they're bringing it into exercise yes. as well. Yoga. It, yeah, yoga, and even in some schools, if a child gets in trouble, instead of going to de um, detention, they're putting them in these rooms where they have to meditate. meditate. And, and that's spiritualism. That's so it. it's just coming in, it's starting with young children all the way up. That's it. And one of the teachings is that God is just love. 
right? Mm -hmm. And sometimes they teach that man is God, right? Right. Look within. Oprah is big on that one. Oh, Oprah yeah. Winfrey and Bell. What's that pastor's first Ryan. name? Rob Bell. Rob, Rob. That look for God within. Right? right, and that's why that's why it's so dangerous when the SDA leaders brought in this 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 man from that Pargament. university, um, Ken Ken Pargament, teaching spiritualism to give pastors and administrators victory over pornography. Look wow. within for strength because God is within you. And if you remember when they had the the Quaker. Right. Who came and speak to and spoke to seven the Adventists right. when they were launching some book, GC Leaders. Okay, yeah. My friends, it is even within the Seventh Day Adventist Church. And as Hillary said, it's in the book Great Controversy. Satan has many prongs, many hooks he's fishing with. Some people are, are gullible to one deception while others are gullible to others. Satan is an arch deceiver. Oh, yeah. Yes, Hillary. And one thing we didn't mention, which is the music. So that's one way that Satan catches people unawares. And I'm not talking about the heavy metal and all of that that we know is, is devil worship. I'm talking about gospel music that is played in Seventh-day Adventist church. I'm talking about sensual music that individuals listen to. That is spiritualism. And it leads to... Um, the fleshly desires, giving, getting the mastery over people. And it, it causes individuals to lose rational thinking and they, they're carrying out their own fleshly uh, lusts. Now, what was one of Satan's duties in heaven? Who was he? He was over the music. The master of music, right? Go to 1 Corinthians chapter 10. Let's, let's go there then. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, look at verse 20. It says this, but I say... That the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to whom? To devils and not to God. And I would not that you should have fellowship with devils. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of devils. You cannot be partakers of the Lord's table and of the table of devils. And what is the context of 1 Corinthians chapter 10? The Bible is telling us what happened to Israel in the days of Moses shall be repeated just before the second coming of Christ. To confirm that, read verse 6 and read verse 11 of 1 Corinthians chapter 10. And what happened to Israel when they came to the banks of Jordan just before they entered Canaan? They allowed the Midianitish Moabite woman to come over into Israel. Right. And what's a woman in prophecy? A church. The church. And notice, who were those principal people the Bible mentioned in that apostasy? Zimri and Cosby. Mm -hmm. Go to Psalm 106 with me. Zimri and Cosby. And what does Zimri mean? Zimri means my praise, mm. my song. And Cosby means to deceive. So let's blend those two together. Let's combine them. Zimri and Cosby, my music. Deception, deceptive music. music. Deceptive, deceptive worship, praise. deceptive praise. And notice, friends, some of you grew up, safe to surf online right now. Some of you grew up, you never heard of praise team within our churches, especially, again, the term itself is not inherently wrong and bad, but what they do during their praise time, praise worship. And now many churches are changing their traditional historical name of the Seventh-day Adventist local churches, and now they call it Praise Tabernacle. Praise Center. Praise Center. Mm -hmm. um, tabernacle of Praise and, and this of Praise. Friends, we are here at the banks of Jordan, Psalm 106. Go there with me. And really, you know, as we consider the time we're living in, the Day of Atonement, yes. it's really time for us to be calling solemn assemblies That's and to it. be afflicting our souls and weeping between the porch and the altar. That's not it. really having this celebratory 
worship that's nowhere to be found in the most holy place or the sanctuary, period. Psalm 106, verse 26, therefore, he lifted up his hand against them to overthrow them in the, where, Hillary, in the wilderness, to overthrow their seed also among the nations and to scatter them in the land. They, oh, friend, look at verse 28. Verse 28 shows us the twin deceptions of Satan, which are what, Hillary? In natural immortality of the soul and Sunday worship. Look at verse 28. They joined themselves also unto where? Baal Peor. And what's Baal? What's Baal worship? Sun worship. Sun worship. Second phrase. And ate the sacrifices of the dead. dead. What is that? Spiritualism. That's spiritualism. In one verse, spiritualism wow. and sun worship. Look at verse 30. Who was mentioned next in verse 30? Phineas. So what account is... Is this talking about in Psalm? Numbers 25. Let's go there then. Mm -hmm. Numbers 25. Numbers 25. Here it is, my friends. On the banks of Jordan. Let me tell you something. Hear me now. Don't miss this point. We don't have to look to what President Trump is doing, what Pope Francis is doing, what Kim Jong-un is doing in North Korea, what Iran is doing, what Turkey is is doing, what the UN is doing, what the feds is doing, the CIA, you get the point. The FBI, you, you get the point, right? To know that we're living in the last days, just look weird in the, in the church. This is a primary marker we're living in the last days because God is not going to allow a Sunday law to come until the church is ready. Likewise, Likewise, the, the son, the law will not come until the church is past its point wow. of return. Of falling away first, and then the man of sin That's will it. be revealed. And the falling away weird. In the church. In the church. Mm -hmm. Numbers 25, verse number 1. Israel began to commit what? Whoredom with whom? The daughters of Moab. Mm -hmm. Verse 2. Watch this. And they sacrificed to the heathen gods, bow down and serve their gods. Verse 3, Israel joined himself unto where? Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord. Was kindled. What is God's wrath? The seven, the seven last, last plagues. plagues. Was a plague poured out in Numbers 25. It was. Yes, my friends. Mm -hmm. A type of the Sunday law crisis. Are we seeing this today in the churches? Are we seeing Seventh-day Adventists inviting over the churches of Babylon in their services. Yes. Look at verse number, look at verse number 14. Who is mentioned in verse 14? Zimri. Zimri. And what does Zimri mean? The sun. Oh, okay. It means to praise. To praise it right. means to celebrate. And who was Zimri? It says right here, Zimri was a prince of a chief house. That means he was a chief leader in Israel. Wow. So what will happen in leadership within the SDA church? What would they bring in? False praise, false worship. worship. This sounds like Cain. Because Cain did not bring the offering God said to bring as Abel brought. But Cain brought what? Fruits. Fruits. And what were the fruit? Offering, a sign of praise, praise. thanksgiving. Wow. Do you see it? Yes. Verse 15, who was Cosby? From Babylon, as it were, the heathens. Yes. And what does Cosby mean? To deceive. And both Cosby and Zimri were in fornication in the church. And openly too. Open. Yes. Pure, Baal pure. Pure means open. National apostasy. apostasy. Look at the screen right here, my friends. We see it. I'll come back to the. I'll return to that if we have time. Most recently, what happened at Oakwood University, Hillary? What happened there? Well, Most recently, they had their do we not see Seventh-day Adventists inviting the modern-day Midianites and Moabites? Talk to us, we Hillary. We do, yes. At the Pastor, Pastoral Evangelism Leadership Council, they invited over uh, ministers from Babylon as well as uh, musicians from Babylon. If you see on the... Uh, now, who is that one? The bottom left? Yes, that's a man called Smokey Norfolk. And he's all, not only a singer, but he's also a, a pastor from Babylon. This is annually. 
Okay, it happens over and over again. And every year they, they invite singers and ministers from Babylon. So it's nothing new, but it's just getting That's more it. open and more That's blatant. It. And let's put the nail in a short place right here. What did, what, what did Balak attempt to do to Israel? Curse. To curse them, right? Mm -hmm. And he summoned whom? Balaam. Balaam. And Balaam tried, but Balaam failed, right? Right. And what did Balaam say? Or God said, no curse upon right. Israel as long as they are faithful, faithful. and obedient. I found no perverseness in them. That's Numbers mm -hmm. 23. But what happened now? Well, now they're involved in spiritualism. They joined themselves unto these Midianitish women. And as a result, the curse came upon them. And, and let's be very clear, right? Mm -hmm. By bringing the woman in the camp, they brought the worship. Right. The gods. And the spiritualism. Right. Of the woman in the camp. In the so camp. when we invite these preachers from Babylon to preach a Seventh-day Adventist, and their singers, what are they bringing into Seventh-day Adventism? They're bringing their false doctrines, their mm -hmm. worship styles, mm -hmm. if you can call it that. And what will errors. come upon God's people as came upon Israel in Numbers 25? A the curse, curse the plagues, plagues, the seven last plagues. It's serious. And remember, we covered this. There he is, bottom left. And on the top row, you have the preachers from Babylon. Notice here, my friends. I mean, we covered this. He's preaching that when, when a person dies... He goes to heaven. Mm -hmm. First, Douglas Haynes. I won't spend time there. Let me pass that. Won't spend time there. Let's come to this, my friends. This is from the Seventh-day Adventist website in the UK. Look at this. Coming March 8th through March 10th, 2018. It says, True Worship Summit. Wow. This is Seventh-day Adventist website promoting so-called True Worship Summit, March 8th through March 10th, 2018. And who are they promoting on the official website of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in the United Kingdom? Who are they promoting on the screen? Let me blow it up. Mm -hmm. Who are they promoting right there? Well, these so-called gospel worldly artists. You have Kirk Franklin, Israel Houghton, Kim Burrell. Uh, They're yeah. all there. There they are. There they Marvin are, Marvin Sapp is there. Um, who else? Donald Lawrence. Uh, Friends, this is Baal Pior now. It's open. Pior means open. It's open apostasy. And listen to one reason why the Seventh-day Adventist Church's website is promoting these men from modern-day Midian and Moab. The curse is going to come upon God's people. The plagues, the seven last plagues. One reason why they are saying that they are Seventh-day Adventists who want a career in music. Wow. So now they must look to Kirk Franklin, look to Marvin Sapp, Look to Israel Houghton. Look to Kim Burrell. Look to Kiera Sheard. Look to these people as your role model. Wow. To now pursue a career in music. And make it big. Don't, don't it take my words for it. Here it is. It, true Worship Summit. The very name is a lie. <laughs> as a matter of fact, what comes wow. to mind here? Summit. They're calling Bible. They're calling where? The mount. Yep. Elijah. The Elijah. mount where Elijah was, Mount Carmel. That was not true worship. No, it wasn't. With the false prophets and Israel. But now we, we are now saying this is true worship summit. Right. Let's read that even, here. Even Exodus 32 as well, calling it a feast to the Lord. Let's read this. True uh, worship. True worship summit is an annual so they have it yearly, an annual European conference set to make its debut in London in March of 2018. Confirmed guests mm. include Kirk Franklin, Donald Lawrence, Marvin Sapp. That's all right. Next paragraph. Okay. All of these worldly artists. The purpose of the summit is to celebrate gospel music. Hold on now. This is written on the Seventh-day Adventist website. Right. The purpose of the summit. Read on. Right. Is to what now? And if you do research on gospel music, it goes back to jazz, which jazz is, goes back to voodoo and spiritualism. Hold on, hold on. Because the father of so-called gospel music is uh, 
father of gospel music is. I remember his name. Is a. No, not Elvis. Come on, Elvis. <laughs> the former of the father of gospel music is. A, let's go. Yeah, but it, it traces back to jazz yes. and voodoo. Yes. And, and that's all spiritualism. That's it. Conjuring up these spirits. Thank you, you, Thomas <laughs> Dorsey. And Thomas Dorsey tells us that he began to blend Christian words with jazz, mm -hmm. rhythm and blues, and jazz go back to voodoo. Right. It's spiritualism. And when they use that type of syncopation, that's oh, what they would friends, use to Thomas conjure Dorsey. up these spirits. And so that's the very thing. So mysterious rapping, that's, the drumming. What now? Yeah. Mysterious rapping? The mysterious rapping. So could rapping? the mysterious rapping in Rochester, New York, be the precursor of hip-hop and rap music? Yeah, and rapping, all these drums. Rapping, R&B. Mm -hmm. Country and Western, etc. Come on now, friends. This is spiritualism. The devil is like an octopus. An octopus, multiple prongs of deception. That's right. Let's read on. The purpose of the summit. Is to celebrate gospel music and the impact it has had throughout the world whilst, whilst empowering, educating, mm. and equipping those with an aspiration to further their music ministry. There it is. Ministry. But what kind of ministry? Ministering and, spirits. And they call this gospel music when it says nothing about the everlasting gospel. gospel, the three angels' messages. Read on. The summit wow. aims to highlight. The summit aims to highlight the inspirational power of gospel music. Whose inspiration? And, and whose whilst, power? Exactly. Whilst also teaching that worship is not simply a style of Christian and gospel music, but a way of life. The tr yes, go ahead. The True Worship Summit will also provide essential insights into the latest branding mm. and marketing strategies to enable attendees to take their music ministry Shh. to the next level and ultimately advance their, their careers. careers. Not advance the three ages. No, <laughs> but look to Kirk career. Franklin and Kim Burrell and all these people. Yolanda Adams and the Donnie McClurkings and the CC and the BBs. You know what? Go with me. Exodus 32, and they had the boldness, the audacity to put this on a Seventh-day Adventist website. With and if logo. somebody says anything, oh, you are airing dirty laundry, but the church itself had the boldness to make this public. Right. Hmm? Look at this. And, 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 and they are calling this true worship? Exodus 32, when they erected the golden calf, now, what did Aaron call it? A feast to the Lord. Let's read that. And was that true worship? No, it Let's was not. Let's read that. Verse number five. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow, Tomorrow is, is a, a feast to the Lord. And what were they doing? Eating and drinking and playing. And verse number, verse number 16 through verse 19, they were singing and dancing and they were naked in the church. Wow. Even down to verse 25. And was there, was there a curse? Oh, yes, Chastisement there was. and judgment. Yes, my yes, friend. Yes. So what is coming? Where is Phineas today? Not taking a literal sword, but the word of God and to cause seven-day Adventists to repentance based on the Bible and the spirit of prophecy. And we are told, my friends, hear me carefully. You may say, how does this fit in our study? Our study is spiritualism. And the Lord's messenger says, when this worship is conducted, this music is rapping, the drums, the mm -hmm. shouting, and the dancing. When this is done in our churches, she says, demons wow. occupy those churches and those spaces. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. is spiritualism. That's right. Selected Messages, book two, page 36. She says, the things you have described as taking place in Indiana, the Lord has shown me, will take place just before the close of probation. Every uncool thing will be demonstrated. Mm. They'll be shouting with what? Drums and dancing. The senses of rational beings will become so confused that they cannot be trusted to make right, right decisions. decisions. And this is called the moving of the Holy Ghost. Wait a minute now. So if they are listening 
imitating these Babylonian in preaching and their teaching and their songs when the final test come. They cannot make what? Right decisions. So will they bow down to Baal Peor? They will. Will they bow down to Baal? Yes. Will they keep and honor Sunday and renounce the seven-day Sabbath? They will. She says it damages your frontal mm -hmm. lobe. And see, that's one of the reasons why in Daniel 3, the music was associated with the bowing down to this, this image. Say some more. Amen. Yeah, because these, these it wasn't just um, it's spiritualism. Babylonians. Yeah, the whole world, including the Jews, were called there to this worship of this, of this image. That's and it. when the music was played... One by one, they fell down and they bowed down and worshipped. She says, watch carefully. This is an invention of Satan to cover up his ingenious methods for making of none effect the pure, elevating, ennobling, sanctifying truth for this time. Then she says, better never have the worship of God blended with music than to use musical instruments to do the work which last January was presented to me, would be brought into our camp meetings. The truth for this time needs nothing of this kind in its work of converting souls. Amen. And we have many churches within Seventh-day Adventists. If they want to have evangelism, what do they do on the first two nights or the first week of their evangelistic program? They invite a Babylonian singer That's right. or musician or choir thinking the Babylonians will bring in other people from the world, from the community, into their churches. But what does God say? The truth for this time needs nothing of this kind in the work of converting souls. A bedlam of noise shocks the senses mm. and perverts that which, if conducted aright, might be a blessing. We have even caught a bird inviting. Fred, uh, Fred, Fred Hammond, Hammond, the Winans. Yolanda Adams. Yeah. And even um, Whitley Phibbs, there was a school... I can't remember this academy in the Northeast, I believe. They invited uh, Cece Winans, and she was singing, performing with Whitley Phibbs and this uh, Seventh-day Adventist choir academy. They had her there. So it's a common... Who? Yes. Yes, it's all there. Yes. yes. It, so it's a, it's a common practice within Seventh-day Adventism, and you're just seeing how music is used yes. as a form of mind control. Spiritualism. Because it, it, like, like you just read, it shocks the senses of rational beings. They cannot tell what they formerly knew as true. I'm going to read that, Hillary. Please. Please, Hillary. Okay. Please. It says this, the powers of satanic agencies blend with the din and noise to have a carnival and this is termed the holy spirit working when the camp meeting is ended the good which ought to have been done and which might have been done by the presentation of sacred truth is not accomplished in other words if you go to these churches or these camp meetings and they are beating those drums and they come with the word the music if you stand up and preach present truth afterwards, God says that truth will not have a lasting effect upon the minds. Mm -hmm. It says this, those participating in the supposed revival receive impressions which lead them adrift. They cannot tell what they formerly knew regarding Bible principles. Question, is there, is there a day coming? When we will have to stand before kings, rulers, to give the reason of our faith? Yes. Now, what mu who must we pray? Now, now, what must we pray to receive at that time? Well, the words of the Holy Spirit. We must pray that he will bring things back, back to, our, to our remembrance that we but, studied. But this statement says they cannot tell what they formerly knew regarding Bible principles. What wow. does that mean, my friends? When it's time for them to stand, they will not have the mental capacity. Mm. Their frontal lobe, lobe would have been so disconnected, damaged. So, so damaged. And, and uh, amen. 
degenerated. Wow. They cannot tell. They cannot remember what they knew as Bible truth. So we could say really that it has a similar effect as alcohol or drugs on the brain destroying the brain cells. And that's why when we read it in early writings that we need a thorough understanding of present truth and we need to understand the state of the dead. That's all well and good. But if we are studying these things, but at the same time listening to this worldly music, not just in the church setting, but even in our own iPads or whatever we have, cell phones or radios, whatever, we are really... Uh, setting ourselves up to receive this delusion from Satan. And when these imper impersonations from dead relatives and friends come to tell us the Sabbath has been changed because our minds are so destroyed because of this damaging music, we are going to receive that strong delusion. We have to give, get victory over this kind of music, gospel music, falsely so-called. She says, lastly, no encouragement should be given to this kind of worship. What is it doing on a Seventh-day Adventist general conference website in the UK? Hmm? The same kind of, no encouragement should be given to this music. Now watch, does anyone know what Pergamos mean? The third church in the series of seven, Pergamos. It means what? Anybody knows Pergamos? It means height and elevation. It's at that time Constantine brought in paganism into the church. When the Christians thought, we look too singular. We want our faith to blend with the world. Pergamos. The same thing is happening now within the Seventh-day Adventist church. A change has happened now. Mm. People who, were, who profess to be Adventists, Seventh-day Adventists, they want to blend with the world. We have come now to Pergamos, true worship, summit, mm. height, elevation. elevation. We want to be like the world. What are we going to receive if we don't change? The Strong plagues, delusion. the curse of God. Let's close right here. Go with me to Matthew 4. We close. Matthew chapter 4. This is spiritualism in the church, my friends. Look at this. Matthew chapter 4. We close right here. Now, look at the screen right here. This is GC. 561. Sister White says this, Satan has long been preparing for his final effort to deceive the world. The foundation of his work was laid by the assurance given to Eve in Eden, you shall not, not surely die. die. Genesis 3 verse 4 and verse 5. Hear me carefully now. Little by little, Satan has prepared the way for his masterpiece of deception. In the development of spiritualism, he has not yet reached the full accomplishment of his designs, but it will be reached when? In, In the, the last, last remnant, remnant of time. time. Last sentence now. The people are fast being lulled to a fatal security to be awakened only by what? When? The outpouring of the wrath of God. And which event brings the wrath of God, the plagues? The mark of the beast. So when will many be awakened, yet it will be too late for them? The mark of the beast. The Sunday when that law. Sunday law is enforced. My friends, look with me. Matthew chapter 4. I want everyone to see this. Because Satan is not going to work the same way with some as he works to deceive others. Look at that first temptation. This is Satan's work of spiritualism. The first thing Satan did was to bring doubt to Jesus, was it not? Yes. And oh, what yes. were his words to Christ in verse 3? Come on now. What did he say in verse 3 right there? Talk to me. If thou be the son of God... Command that these stones be made what? Bread. Now, did he insinuate doubt? Yes. Now, if thou be the son of God, when did Christ hear those words? At his baptism. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. That was 40 days previously. And Satan came right there now and said, if thou be the son of God, mm. command that these stones be made bread. Firstly, spiritualism it always lead God's people to doubt the words of God. Don't forget that. Wow. Don't forget that. To doubt his promises. Wow. And what did Christ say? It is written. 
So that means he quoted scripture. scripture. Man shall not live. Now look at the second temptation. What did Satan say next in verse 5? Again. Verse 5. What did he say in verse 5? Well, he took them up to a summit. <laughs> and verse 6. Taketh them up into the holy city and setteth him on a pinnacle of a temple. Verse 6. And saith unto him, if thou be the son of God. So what cast, did he insinuate a second time? That he wasn't the son. Doubt. 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 Right. And what did Satan do next now? He quoted a partial scripture. I wonder why. Why would he come a second time and quote scripture? Why? Because Christ met him the first time with a scripture. So he came the second time and he quoted scripture. Mm -hmm. So what is God telling us? When Satan's ministers come in the last days, what would they also quote? They're going to quote, quote scriptures. So what must we make sure we know? The word of God. What more can be said, my friends? Hmm. Now, let's go back to Genesis. Did Satan not begin with doubt? Yes, he did. With Eve? Did he not quote scripture? Hath God said. Yeah. Wow. Did he quote God's words? Mm -hmm. Hath God said. But of course, he misconstrued what God said. Right, right. my friends? Yes. And in the second temptation, Satan led Eve, not led, Satan led, sat, Satan attempted to lead Christ, not only to doubt, but he quoted scripture to lead Christ to commit what sin? The, the sin, sin of, of presumption. What does that mean? To claim God's blessings while in disobedience. That's it. Mm -hmm. Cast down thyself. Right. The Bible says he shall bear thee up, up the if angels. thou dash thy foot, foot against a stone. stone. The sin of presumption. presumption. So how may we discern Satan on any guise? The preachers and the people will lead you to sin right. and say God is going to bless you. And it God is, is God is love. Loving, loving to destroy you. God is love. Go ahead. Right. He's loving. Go ahead and sin. Mm. Spiritualism. Right. And, and then what did what happened in the third temptation? What did Satan say to Christ now? He took him up on this high mountain, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And, and what, what did Satan show Christ? All the kingdoms of the world. And what? And the glory of them. So he was trying to make the things of this world look appealing. Mm -hmm. Ah, friends. Do you see it? The kingdoms and the glory of them. In other words, he was trying to make the things of this world look how? Attractive. attractive. Mm -hmm. That's how the devil is going to deceive many individuals. The glamour and the glitter. Not everything that glitters is what? It's gold. That's it, my friend. Mm -hmm. And what did Christ say now? If thou bow down, all these things will I give unto you. What did Christ say? Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written. Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him, and him only. only shalt thou serve. So my friends, let's claim God's promises. Do not give in to doubt. And when you get victory once over, the, over Satan's temptation of doubt, guess what? He's coming again the second oh, yes. time. With more don't power. Forget, oh yes, <laughs> don't forget that. He's coming again to use something in your life to cause you to doubt God. Mm. To doubt God's promises. But if you stick to the word of God. Yes. Claim God's word, you will be victorious. Amen. Is that point clear, my friends? Yes. And when the final test comes, you will stand as Christ stood. Amen. You know, as you were um, saying that, that Satan firstly introduces doubt. I'm thinking of this statement, but I don't know where it is. Perhaps you can help that. First, he introduces doubt because it says that the very last deception of Satan will be to make of none effect the testimonies. And we've been talking about to the law and the testimonies. Yes. And so first he introduces doubt upon the testimonies and then he, it goes through this phase and then the final downward march to perdition. to perdition. And so if he can get us to doubt, that's the very first step. And then from there, you know, it's downhill and you'll find yourself right on that train to perdition, that train of spiritualism. So we have to know the word of God for ourselves. And when Satan tries to introduce doubt, we have to meet him with a it is written, a thus saith the Lord. Shall we pray? Father in heaven, we thank you this evening for your words. Let these words not lose their impress, their power upon our minds. 
Oh dear God, keep us faithful. Help us to stand in these last days and not to find ourselves giving in to Satan's temptations, to doubt the sin of presumption, worldly living, but to meet every temptation of Satan with a thus say the Lord. Amen. We must commit then God's word to memory. And when the devil comes, we must recite, claim, and keep quoting these promises until his power over us is broken. Mm -hmm. And as your word says, temptation once resisted often give power to more firmly resist a second time. Why? Because Satan returns mm -hmm. and he will return again until we get power fully mm -hmm. over all of his temptations. Father, I pray for every individual locally and safe to serve online. Help us not to come to these lessons, hearing these things, mm -hmm. and not putting them into practice by your grace. Mm -hmm. Your word says, being confident of this very thing, that he who hath begun the good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. We pray for your church who is in, that is in apostasy, leaders in apostasy. Mm -hmm. The common people like sheep are following blind guides. Whatever it takes to awaken your church, do it, dear God. Save us. We thank you for hearing us. We thank you for answering. Is our prayer in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 All right, friends, thank you again for joining us for this study of God's word and the book Great Controversy. And we will return, I believe the next chapter is Liberty of Conscience Threatened. All right, read that chapter and let's prepare ourselves for next Thursday at 7.30 p.m. And remember, this coming Sabbath, please join us for our service at 11.30. As a matter of fact, we begin our fasting and prayer, fasting and prayer, sunset Friday through sunset on Sabbath, all right? And we will begin the live stream shortly before 11 a.m. on this coming Sabbath. See you then, by God's grace. God bless. Maranatha.